Hey friends, Kyle here, and I hope you're doing well wherever you're watching this video from today. Now in today's video, we're talking about coffee grinders. Which grinder is best for you? There's so many different coffee grinders on the market. It's a fastly growing and improving industry. And so I'm gonna help you to just understand a little bit more about coffee grinders. But I also wanna to talk today about different options at different budgets. I wanna talk about the relationship between the coffee, it's burr, the coffee grinder rather, it's burr. And then I also wanna end this video talking about the correlation between a porta filter size or basket size, the diameter, and your coffee grinder. You know, do you need to upgrade your grinder if you get a more expensive espresso brewer? If you move from something like the Pro 2 to the 58, what does that look like, right? What do, you, what do you need to do for a coffee grinder? So we're gonna dive all into that today and hopefully you'll know just a little bit more about coffee grinders at the end of this video. Let's start off with going through a couple different options that I have here today. Obviously you can see I've got the Pro 2 from Flair here today and the 58, but a lot of this will apply to all the brewers and I'll be sure to be as specific as I can while going through this. Let's go quickly through this and I'll talk about them more in depth later in this video. Uh, first off, I've got this very affordable Normcore hand grinder. Now this one isn't really an espresso grinder and I'll explain that a little later, but this is a very affordable grinder around $100. This right here is the Flare Royal, obviously so fitting to be in this video. And this is a great coffee grinder that is very underrated. It's fully metal, it has great uh, burrs that we'll talk about. It's got a good adjustment system and it's perfect for the Pro 2 because the grind chute is actually the same diameter as the porta filter of the Flare Pro 2. I'll show you that a bit later too. We're gonna also talk about this guy right here. This is the Lagome Mini from Optiono. It's one of my favorite coffee grinders right now, especially for filter coffee. It's a compact electric grinder. I mean, look at that. All right, moving on back here, you can see I've got the DF64, and this is a very popular grinder within espresso enthusiasts. And I've been on the Flare Facebook, and it seems like a lot of you guys have this grinder as well. For an espresso grinder of this size with this capability, it's good value. And then at the end over here, we've got the Niche Zero. And this is a very popular grinder, again with enthusiasts, that has a conical burr set. And the Niche Zero is a little bit more than the DF64, coming in around $700 or just shy of that. So uh, before we dive into this, let's, uh, let's brew a coffee. The DF64 is a great grinder because it is that budget option for a higher end grinder, um, but it also just produces fantastic coffee because you can swap different burrs out of this grinder. Now I'm gonna brew this on the Flare 58. Now one of the biggest questions I get with coffee grinders is how do you know which setting is for espresso? And that's such a good question. And if you're new to brewing espresso at home, you're new to coffee grinders, it's mostly trial and error. You will know if your grind is too fine or too coarse uh, based on the results in the cup. So today I'm gonna do that. I'm going in blind here. I haven't brewed on this uh, grinder today or with this coffee because every coffee is so different. There's so many variables to your coffee that can change the grind setting. So let's see the results here. And as you can see here, as I'm pressing down, this is just absolutely messy. It's too fast. There's not enough resistance in that puck, therefore making the flow a little too quick. Uh, the coffee's gonna be under extracted. In fact, I'll taste this right now. I'm confident this will taste a little sour and not brewed in 17 seconds. Not terrible, but it can be definitely a lot better, especially if we're going for a very traditional two to one style espresso. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna find out my grind setting by just a few notches because I don't wanna make massive adjustments here with my coffee grinder. And then we're gonna pull this again. And then we're gonna talk about these coffee grinders because today's video is not about dialing in, but having a coffee grinder, it's a big part of it. Now, like I mentioned, I find up the grind about three notches here because I knew my espresso grind setting wasn't off terribly. Uh, it still had a bit of resistance, but it needed a little bit more to be able to create a little bit more pressure there and get this up into its espresso range for the flare uh, or between six to nine bars. Let's try it. Okay, so this one was still a little fast. This was in turbo shot territory. I went a little long on the ratio as well, but uh, let's give this a test. Mm -hmm. I actually really enjoy that, but for me, I like acidic coffee. So my next step here, if I want to take it one step further, would be probably going a little finer, a couple more notches. 
aiming for 25 to 30 seconds for a two to one ish ratio. That's a good starting point for espresso. Okay, now that I'm caffeinated, let's go over each one of these grinders in detail. Let's start off over here. The Normcore grinder is a hand grinder, like I mentioned, and this here has a 38 millimeter burr. Now this is a conical burr. And what that means is there is a center burr, it's a cone, and on the outside there's a ring. What happens as you turn the grinder on a hand grinder, the hand crank, this spins and that pulls the beans down between the center burr and the ring burr around the outside. And that'll break down the coffee beans into smaller particles as we know as coffee grounds. Now the way we adjust grinds is changing the space between the two burrs. When we do that, there's more space or less space, changes the burr grind size. Now this grinder has 22 steps per rotation. So for a hand grinder, that's not bad. And honestly, for most people, this will do great. But what needs to be understood is that a grinder like this has limitations. It's definitely not an espresso grinder. It really doesn't have the micro adjustments you would need to really fine tune a coffee, especially for one with a bigger diameter portafilter. Again, we'll address that a little later. If you're in a space where you want a cheap grinder that can do filter coffee in the occasional espresso, I definitely recommend checking this one out or grinders like the Time More C2. Now over here, I really want to talk about this Flare Royal for a second. And today these aren't reviews. These aren't these. I'm, I'm not going to depth about each grinder, but just kind of talking about why you'd want to spend more money on a grinder. What do you get for your return? When it comes to hand grinders, you got to really decide, do I want to hand grind my espresso? Because it can be such a tedious task to hand grind coffee. Uh, if you don't mind that, you can save a lot of money and have a very tactile feel, a very personal feel with your coffee. That sounds weird, but it's actually true. And so with the Flare Royal, this is a great all metal grinder uh, with a bigger burr geometry. Now this is 47 millimeter Etzinger burrs. Now this grinder comes in around $160 and this one has a ring to be able to make smaller adjustments. And when it comes to espresso, this is so important. Guys, I can't stress this enough. Being able to adjust small increments is really important when it comes to espresso because espresso is so finicky. Every little adjustment can make big changes in the espresso that we brew. And one of the things that's really nice, as I mentioned earlier, is that the grind chamber is the same diameter as the Pro 2. So if you're a Pro 2 owner or you're thinking about buying a Pro 2, this portafilter is 46 millimeters, and so is this. So as you can see, they fit together. I mean, come on. The optional Lego Mini, if you do not want to hand grind your coffee every day, electric grinders are so convenient. What's really great about the option O Lego Mini and what I would advocate for you to look for when you're buying an espresso grinder is something that is stepless if possible. What I mean by that is the adjustment ring that changes the burr uh, spacing allowing for coarser or finer grinds doesn't have clicks. It actually has a stepless design. So this is fully smooth. There's infinite adjustments available. Why that's great, as I've already mentioned with espresso, we then have infinite adjustments available for our espresso grind. Also, it's really easy to dial in. It's very simple to use. Uh, it's it's small, it's compact, and it's quick. Now I know what you're thinking, Kyle, that's great. These are small compact grinders, but what about electric grinders? What about those beefy electric grinders behind you? This is the DF64, and this is a flat burr grinder. Now, I've showed you what a conical burr looks like. Again, that's this cone that has an outer ring. Flat burrs are very different. So these are flat burrs, and what happens is you often get the coffee beans fed through uh, one side of these burrs, and inside these burrs, they'll have a space between these two discs, and as one is spinning, the coffee beans will be ground through these two discs, pushed outwards as they spin. You'll often have like a sweeper on the outside that pushes the coffee grounds out. Let me show you how this one works. So up here, I have a bellows. This is something unique to this grinder here. Some grinders have it as well, but this is something that just basically pushes air through the grind chamber and pushes out any unwanted coffee so that every time your coffee grinder is fresh, it's mostly empty, there's no retention left over. So what I'm gonna do is open this up, put my coffee beans in here, and then I can adjust it by changing this giant dial here and go finer, I can go coarser. I'm gonna put my lid back on and there's a power button down here. And when I activate this, those burrs, these, there's two flat burrs just like this inside this grinder. Uh, one is gonna spin. It's often the bottom burr for this grinder here. It's gonna spin, grind that coffee and push it out the front chute here. Now flappers are really great and have 
mostly great results. They are often more expensive in the coffee grinder realm. You never see them on hand grinders because they need a higher RPM, but, but the results they get are, are great. And enthusiasts love flappers because they elevate the clarity you can get from your coffee. You can really taste the nuances of each coffee bean. You can tell the difference. There's separation in flavors for the most part. And a lot of people love that. Now, some people prefer conical burrs as well. This is just a personal preference and it's totally subjective. Uh, but the results here from my DF64 are great. I have a burr set in there called this uh, SSP High Uniformity, and uh, it is a very uniform burr that creates very good gooey espressos, but provides a bit of clarity that you'd want as well, a little bit more than a conical burr. Now, before we move on to the other topics today, I want to talk about this grinder right here, and this is the Niche Zero. Now, this is very similar in its internal design to a lot of these grinders, especially this one right here. It also has a conical burr, but this has a bigger 63 millimeter conical burr. What that's gonna help us with is when we're grinding lots of coffee, that burr is going to have more resistance to heating up like some of these burrs would at a smaller size. And it'll also typically be faster at grinding because there's more surface area on that burr to be able to grind up those coffee beans. Uh, with the Niche Zero, this is so popular because it also, like the DF64, is really good at having low retention. Basically, the coffee you put in, you're getting out. Now this grinder works very similar to the DF64 in many instances. You put your coffee beans up here, this one doesn't have a bellows, it really doesn't need it. And you close the safety lid, turn on the motor. You can see it's a very quiet grinder, something that you'll get when you spend more money. Often motors are quieter, they're better built. So when it comes to conical burrs or flat burrs, this is really a personal preference. The flavor profiles on a flat burr are often higher in clarity. They lack some of the texture that you would get from a conical burr because these often have a wider distribution of grounds. So you often get more fines, but you'll also get um, maybe a couple more boulders too. It will be less uniform, typically. But with a flat burr, you'll often get a little bit more of a uniform grind, especially if you opt for like a unimodal style burr, which has a very tight grind distribution. Uh, with a grinder like that, you'll get very few fines, and it'll be tighter in one distribution range. So this comes down to a personal preference thing, and hopefully that helps you understand the difference between flat and conical burrs. But let's talk about real quick the difference in portafilter size and the effect it has on our grinder. I'm sure many of you watching this today have either purchased a, a, a flare espresso brewer or have an espresso uh, machine at home and you're like, man, I had this machine before, but when I got my new machine, the shots aren't good. They're maybe just spurting everywhere. They're fast flowing. It just isn't what it used to be. That can be frustrating. And so today I wanna to talk about that really quickly. So today I've got two portafilter designs. I've got this one right here from the Flare Pro 2. This is a 46 millimeter portafilter basket. And this one right here is a more traditional uh, commercial style portafilter. This is a 58 millimeter portafilter basket. Okay, this one's absolutely so much bigger than this one here. I mean, look at that. Now is bigger always better? That's a really hard question to answer. It's really gonna come down to your needs and what you're looking for in coffee. Now, a 46 millimeter basket is so capable, absolutely great, and can brew just as good coffee in many instances as this guy right here. But what needs to be understood is that this will often produce different style of espresso. Let me explain that. With a smaller portafilter basket, what you're gonna experience is obviously the sidewalls are gonna be closer together and you can use very similar doses in this basket right here and you can get 16 to 18 grams of coffee in this little guy, even though it's so much smaller. Now, believe it or not, this right here is a precision basket that is also rated for 18 grams. Why we're seeing that, even though the diameter is different, is because the depth is also different. You can see how much deeper this little guy is than this portafilter here. And if I pop this basket out, this is actually the basket. So you can just see how much deeper this guy is. So this is really interesting, right? If we can have the same amounts of coffee, hypothetically, would it be the exact same? Well, well, no. This one right here being a 46 millimeter, you're gonna have a much smaller surface area for that initial water contact from the shower head of the Pro 2. You can obviously see that's much smaller than the group head would be on this one. But what that also means is because there's less depth in a basket that is 18 grams like this one here, there is gonna be a less travel distance for the water to travel through that resistance in the coffee puck than this one right here. The results being, you're gonna often have to grind a little coarser for something with a greater depth like this port filter basket than this one. How does that affect your grinder? Well, when you need to grind finer, you're gonna have to get a grinder that can grind 
fine enough and uniform enough. Now, when we look at these grinders here, most of these are capable of doing this. The Lego Mini can absolutely grind fine enough, but the problem with the Normcore in my experience is its burst style and, and the way that adjustments go, it can grind fine enough, but at those fine settings, each click is just too large where one adjustment can be way too different. And you can go from being just off of dialing it in, maybe you're just too coarse, and one click can make it just too fine. What I would recommend the Normcore or cheaper entry level coffee grinders for is something like the Flare Neo. That's a pressurized portafilter basket. And what that means is that it's going to create the resistance that you would normally need to create in the coffee puck, which builds up pressure, right? Flow times resistance equals pressure. So the way that it does that, it has less holes on the bottom and it has basically one hole that builds up pressure and creates, creates espresso. So for the 58 millimeter basket, we need a grinder to create enough resistance to be able to build pressure. So make sure you have a grinder to be able to do that. You need something that can do very small micro adjustments. The DF64 and Niche are great examples. Now, smaller port filters are not all bad. There's actually a huge pro with them and that being lack of channeling or resistance to channeling. Now, because these uh, pucks are so thin in their, their puck travel, the distance that the water has to get through that puck, um, that means that the water has an easier chance to find the path of least resistance or coffee channeling. We can fix that with puck prep using tools like a WDT, which is a little rake that basically stirs up our coffee grounds, tamping it properly, ensuring that we have good coffee, a good coffee grinder that is uniform. But when you have a puck diameter like this, because the travel is longer for that water to get to the end of this portafilter, it is harder to create channeling. It's not impossible, it's just harder. So therefore we can have a less uniform grinder and still have great results. If we try to get the same kind of puck depth as we do on the 58, on a 46, we can simulate very similar profiles. Now, why we'd want to do that is because, well, this actually has a different cup profile. It tastes a little different than this one. Often these ones, when using a thicker dose, uh, have a little more texture, have a little bit more body. They lack a little bit of the clarity. With this though, with 58 millimeter baskets and why they're so popular, uh, especially among enthusiasts, is because you are going to get a little bit more clarity in these shots. Hopefully this helps you understand what you should be looking for. If you do have a 58 millimeter basket, a more commercial style basket, make sure you get a grinder that can grind very uniform, can grind fine enough to enable that you have enough resistance in your puck. If you have a smaller portafilter like a 46 millimeter from the Pro 2, which is a fantastic brewer, or the Classic, or any of those smaller portafilters, uh, then you can absolutely get a slightly cheaper grinder, one that's maybe a little less uniform. Hand grinders are great options, absolutely, as long as they can grind for espresso. Uh, and if you have something like the Neo that has a pressurized portafilter that creates that resistance for you, you can go even cheaper. I hope you guys learned something today. If you did, make sure that you smash that like button down below. Uh, be sure to follow Flair and subscribe to this channel. And thank you guys so much for listening, watching, and we'll see you guys all in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Peace.